You know who sat down with George Stephanopoulos uh, for a town hall in Philly, uh, where uncommitted voters asked him to take on the biggest problems in America right now. Here's a few of them. Take a look. Why would you downplay a pandemic that is known to disproportionately harm low-income families and minority communities? Yeah. Well, I didn't downplay it. I actually, in many ways, I upplayed it in terms of action. Should pre-existing conditions, which Obamacare brought into, uh, brought to fruition, be removed? No. Without, please stop and let me finish my question, sir. Should that be removed? We're going to be doing a health care plan very strongly and protect people with pre-existing conditions. When has America been great for African Americans in the ghetto of America? Well, I can say this. We have tremendous African American support. But you have yet to address and acknowledge okay. that there's been a race problem in America. So if you go, well, I hope there's not a race problem. So, <laughs> OK, I just, I'm going to open it up to the floor. What, what was your takeaway from this last night, Sarah? Okay, well, uh, I don't think I learned anything new at all. I, I don't think many people did. Um, I thought it would be interesting to see him in this setting, and I thought it was because he was on a chair sitting down, and typically when we've seen him, he kind of hovers over people and he's intimidating. He didn't have his inner circle around him or reporters to yell at, so I thought we might see a side of him that kind of resonated more with the human level of these people asking him these questions. Uh, what did surprise me and always surprises me is some of the sound bites that he's able to not only not answer a question, but double down on a, something that's completely not true. Like I didn't downplay, I upplayed. I don't, I don't even know if upplaying is a thing, um, but the, the circular reasoning got me, it was, it was oh. notable. But the big thing that I thought is for all the nefarious in intent that we always assign to President Trump and who he hates and why he hates them, I actually think apathy is his superpower. And that became very apparent last night as he looked into the face of citizens whose his policies are affecting and did so little to help or respond. Yeah. What do you? What about you, Joy? Did you? Did anything? Did you? What did you see last night? The lies come fast and furious. I have whiplash, but um, <clears throat> I, I want to give kudos to George Stephanopoulos because he did fact check him on uh, the uh, BS about uh, ha having a new health plan and how Obamacare doesn't work, etc. Whatever. Uh, so I think that that's a good standard for other reporters to follow. You just fact check in real time. Of course, he lies so much that it would be a 26-hour interview. Um, what interested me also was his use of the term herd mentality. Now, it's really herd immunity that he meant to say, but it's an interesting Freudian slip, isn't it? Because it kind of, uh, it kind of describes the people who are continued to follow him. They're in a herd mentality, like lemmings going, going over a cliff. And, the, and I might add right. that, as Howard Stern said, you know, he has nothing but contempt for this herd. So he put it out there because he, he, he secretly thinks that they're horrible people. That's what I think. By the way, um, in the right. last 48 and, hours, and, this right. is what we learned from him. Exploding trees cause wildfires. A mask mandate is a bad idea because waiters don't like them. And he has a plan for health care, which if you believe that, I have a bridge to sell you. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Sonny, did, did you take anything new away that you hadn't thought of before? Well, yeah, I, I thought that it was actually very instructive because looking forward to, let's say, the debates, it's clear that the debate moderator is going to have to be able to fact check in real time because what we saw was sort of this barrage of lies. If you look at the Washington Post, uh, they gave him four Pinocchios for like 24 statements. I mean, he lied over and over and over again. And so we're going to, I think the American people are going to need fact checking in real time and he's going Going to need to be held to account for the, the misinformation that he's going to disseminate during the debates. I think the other thing that was interesting is that he really um, was out of his element, right? Because he generally is preaching to the choir. He's on Fox News. They're not uh, fact-checking him. Um, as Sarah mentioned, he's usually before the White House press corps. He's being combative. He was unable to be combative in this setting because he was speaking to real Americans. And um, the other thing that I, I I thought was was really um, instructive was his answer to um, 
health care because he basically said, no, I, I certainly um, think that we have to cover pre-existing conditions when in June, in the middle of a global pandemic, a pandemic that to this point in America, 195,000 Americans are dead under his administration, they, the Trump administration has tried to knock out yeah. the Affordable Care Act, which would leave 23 million Americans without health care and would strike down health care for people with pre-existing conditions. And he basically just lied to this woman with a pre-existing condition who has the Affordable Care right. Act and said, no, I'm not trying to do that, and that we have a plan. The, Republican, uh, the Republicans don't have a plan. They have nothing. It's been three and a half right. years. And so, again, he's actively working against the American people, and they need to know that right. during the debates. Right. Megan, what was your, what was your take? You, you thought there was a, a couple of bright spots? Yeah, the first thing is that I, I just like seeing Americans being able to speak truth to power and ask what they want to and, and need to hear from our president. I think, again, it's a total referendum on so much of political media that some of the more interesting answers just came from average Americans in this town hall. Um, I Look, I, I think I, I see this through a different lens. I actually was most interested in the Abraham Accords, which is this new realignment and peace treaty between United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Israel, and the United States. States. I wish this was getting more attention and credit. I know that it's hard to give any wins to the Trump administration, but I always try and be fair and call balls and strikes like we see it. And you're seeing a total geopolitical realignment in the Middle East um, against, against Iran and for Israel. And there's rumors that Saudi Arabia could be joining. And I thought it was actually a really big day yesterday for all the hubris and sort of uh, baloney that I have seen <laughs> blown around in this administration about bringing peace to the Middle East. This really is a a huge step and I saw President Trump talk about it and I was really pleased yesterday and this is getting very little attention in the scheme of things for just how big it is and I just wish that we for a moment could just uh, just take a moment and really appreciate the fact that there's going to be embassies for Israel in Middle Eastern countries right now and it, and it really is an amazing step forward for peace in the Middle East and for any pro-Israel American it was a really big day so that was actually what I was most interested last night when I watched. Well, you know, I'm, I'm all for peace everywhere, and I, when, I, when they do it, I'll believe it. I just, I don't want to get excited about st very much stuff when I hear it now. This is why I have such a hard time, because, you know, you get excited and you think, okay, maybe this time, and then you get your face smashed, so I'm not going to do that. But I was struck by the young man, the, uh, the young brother who confronted him about making America great again, that slogan, and asking him when he thought uh, America was great for, for black folks. And his answer was kind of like, what? Because he kind of, he, he seemed shocked <laughs> that it was a problem. I, I don't know. I, I could only watch a little bit because I, I'm much more into Cobra Kai. I just, that's <laughs> where I'm at.